Hi, welcome to the third domain of CCSK. Hope you had a chance to review previous domains. This domain is going to cover the legal implication of uh, the public cloud and private cloud hosted by the third party in the different countries, contracts, and handling the electronic discovery request in the litigation. You can expect uh, three questions uh, in the exam from this domain. The, the legal framework uh, here, the cloud consumer should choose where their data should be hosted in compliance with the cybersecurity regulations. Um, what will be the location of the uh, the cloud provider, um, what will be the location of the cloud user and where is the data subject is uh, uh, located and where are the servers, for example, uh, the, um, uh, the workloads and uh, the storage, uh, for example, in the uh, in AWS, we have a storage located in the in the different country, and the workloads are located in the different country. So we need to ensure during the contract, uh, considering the legal frameworks, that we need to identify what all compliances we need to meet and uh, what could be the legal uh, challenges there. So we um, also consider the location of the servers, uh, the legal jurisdictions based on uh, our infrastructure that we are agreeing with the cloud provider we need to understand what will be the jurisdiction um, for uh, for any um, potential issue common themes uh, has to be there um, across the cloud provider as well as the cloud customer um, required security measures um, has to be implemented in line with the um, uh, data protection and the privacy uh, uh, regulations uh, restriction to the uh, data border uh, uh, transfer cross border data transfer so it is it is primarily uh, for the countries where the data cannot uh, cross the border without uh, having the localization some countries having such kind of laws and some are not so we really need to understand where we are operating where uh, um, is going to be the data, where is going to be the data subject. So here the data subject is any individual uh, whose data is, is going to be uh, to be collected. So there are some regional uh, uh, examples of some laws uh, in Asia specific. Um, uh, we have Australia, China, Japan and Russia. In Australia, we have uh, two uh, key laws. One is the Privacy Act of uh, 1988 and the Australian uh, Consumer Law, ACL. So um, the Privacy Act includes other different 13 Australian privacy principles. Um, which apply to all private sectors and uh, not just not for uh, the profit organization. Uh, within uh, annual turnover of more than uh, Australian dollar, three millions. Uh, all private health uh, service providers and uh, some small businesses as well. Whereas the ACL, uh, Australian Consumer Law, uh, protects the consumer from uh, false and misleading contracts and poor conduct, misleading uh, contracts and uh, uh, poor conduct from uh, providers. In China, um, over the past couple of years, um, they have accelerated the pace of uh, its adoption of the legal structure to address the privacy and security of personal and company information. Uh, so in 2017, they proposed to uh, uh, measure on security of the cross-border transfer of uh, the personal information and uh, important data. Um, this is already published uh, by the Chinese government and are currently being evaluated for the potential implementation. Uh, similarly, in Japan, um, there is an act on uh, the protection of uh, personal information, um, APPI, that requires the uh, private sector to uh, protect uh, personal information and data security. Um, in the beginning of 2017, uh, there, there was some amendment uh, in APPI law, uh, which limits the ability to transfer personal data to third parties without uh, prior consent of the data subject. Um, as I mentioned, data subject is us as individual. Russian um, data protection law that contains uh, significant restriction on the data processing, consent, localization. Um, and recently, Russia has thrown out some companies uh, who did not have any presence in uh, in Russia, uh, but they were operating, uh, you know, remotely from somewhere else. So 
it is the first requirement that you have to localize your data you have to be present in the country so that in case of any issue you can uh, um, they can get hold of you in Europe, uh, we have GDPR and uh, Network Information Security Directive, um, NISD. Um, we call that as NIS Directive. Uh, in GDPR, this is primarily focused on uh, the personal data of, uh, of all the European nationals, um, national uh, residents. Uh, the applicability that uh, talks about the lawfulness, accountability, who is accountable for what, uh, data subject right. Um, it talks about uh, the data subject right. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, different rights of, uh, you know, right to object, to have their data corrected or erased, to be compensated for the damages uh, suffered as a result of unlawful processing. Uh, also right to be forgotten and uh, right to data portability cross-border data transfer uh, again this is uh, the restriction in GDPR as well um, that the you know the data cannot uh, cannot be passed on to the another country the breach of security it has uh, it has to be reported so very important here um, it as per GDPR uh, it is 72 hours within 72 hours uh, the companies will need to report uh, any breach of security uh, to the authorities discrepancies among uh, the state members um, there are numerous instances where uh, each member state may adopt its own rule um, for example Germany requires that a data uh, protection officer to be appointed if the company has more than nine employees so uh, within Europe as well uh, different uh, state members can define their own um, own restrictions on top of the GDPR uh, if they want sanctions it is uh, more about the penalties um, <laughs> In case of uh, NIEM's directive, National Information Directive, it talks about uh, the technical and organization measures and uh, taking appropriate measures, notify competent authority. It is, it is, um, it is more on uh, the the general data protection or general information uh, uh, protection um, uh, in the uh, in the organization. Uh, to take appropriate measures to prevent and minimize the impact of any incident um, that affects the security of network and information system used for the provision of uh, census services or to facilitate uh, the continuation of uh, these services accordingly notify the competent authorities um, they provide information necessary uh, to the uh, to access the security of their network and uh, information systems Provide uh, evidence of the effective implementation of security policies, such as the results of the security audits. So very important. Uh, in Americas, uh, we have uh, Central and South Americas. No, um, uh, as such, uh, obligations there as yet. The countries are adopting data protection laws at uh, the rapid pace. Um, some countries um, have already um, passed some kind of uh, data protection laws for example Argentina, Chile, uh, Colombia, Mexico, Peru uh, have passed data protection law inspired mainly by the European directives. In US um, we have different um, different laws there there is no one umbrella um, because due to its, its sectorial approach the United States has um, has um, has uh, hundreds of federal state and local regulations from the details of uh, you know of a written information security plan to rules uh, for the disclosing uh, security breaches federal law um, it is uh, you know numerous federal laws and their regula related regulations uh, for example GLBA gram Lishability Act uh, it is for uh, the financials uh, health insurance portability and accountability act HIPAA it is for uh, the medical uh, in personal information um, COPA contains provisions that pertains to the privacy and security of the personal information. 
companies are responsible for um, any act of their subcontractors as well so they cannot run away uh, that this has done uh, this has been done by our subcontractors so it is the company's responsibility u.s state laws uh, in addition to the federal laws and regulations most u.s states have laws related to uh, the data privacy uh, and or the data security these laws apply to any entity that collects uh, personal data or process the personal data um, of an individual who resides in that state regardless of where is the United States uh, uh, where in the United States the data is stored it is applicable for uh, for all security breach disclosure law numerous um, federal security laws or rules uh, such as um, uh, those applying to the healthcare provider as well as the most uh, state laws uh, that requires uh, entities um, uh, you know that have suffered a breach of security that compromise a specified category of the data for example PHI uh, the patient health information um, to comply notify notify affected individuals and in many cases the state and federal uh, agencies of the occurrence of the security uh, or the breach of the security Contracts and uh, the providers, uh, provider selection. So, uh, few things that we need, we should um, take care of: uh, the internal due diligence, uh, 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 monitoring, testing, and updating; external due diligence; contract negotiation; rely on uh, third-party um, audits and the attestation. The very important point here is: uh, even if a specific activity is not regulated. Um, uh, the, the cloud customer may have a contract obligations to protect the uh, personal information on uh, of their own clients con uh, contacts um, or employees uh, to ensure uh, the data is not used for the secondary purpose and it is not disclosed or shared with any third party also the uh, the providers should publish their uh, policies requirements and uh, capabilities to meet legal uh, obligations for the customers um, um, legal obligation it could be for example electronic discovery um, in case of the litigations so uh, it is it is very important uh, when you are selecting the provider and you are reviewing the contract we need to see that you have uh, you understand the cloud providers policies requirements and the capabilities if you want to comply with uh, the e-discovery or uh, on any on any um, uh, privacy law that is in your region or any any other other law that you want to comply with so any of these any of the uh, three model uh, uh, for example uh, you know sas pass is um, you should get your head around the role of uh, the controller um, or the custodian and remember that the jurisdiction is very important to determine uh, the applicable laws uh, during the contract review and uh, provider selection very very important uh, for example um, for internal due diligence uh, the health information protection under uh, the HIPAA that cannot be transferred to third party or the business associate uh, without imposing a specific obligations on that associate so before signing the cloud contract both the uh, cloud provider as well as the cloud customer should evaluate the respective practices needs and restrictions uh, to identify relevant legal barriers and the compliance requirements keep uh, monitoring and uh, testing and updating um, contract negotiation it is important to uh, negotiate uh, numerous precautions and measures can be taken by the parties to reduce exposure to legal commercial and reputational risk in uh, in connection with the use of cloud services try to negotiate review contract even if it is not negotiable reliance on third party audits um, in cloud computing uh, third party audits and attestations are frequently used to uh, ensure compliance with the, uh, the aspect of the cloud computers uh, cloud providers infrastructure um, allowing a customer to build their own compliant services on top of the cloud platform electronic discovery 
so what is electronic discovery it is a it is a consideration um, that concerns how information will be placed on the legal hold or how information in the cloud will be accessed or reviewed and produced in the litigation or regulatory requests in particular um, the discovery uh, need not to be limited to the documents known at the time of uh, you know which are to be admissible as an evidence in the court instead the discovery will apply to all the documents reasonably calculated to lead to the admissible evidence so very important point it is uh, applicable to all the documents also the the cloud provider um, should publish their policies um, requirements and capabilities to meet the legal obligations for, for the customers to check whether it meets the electronic discovery requirement or not so very important aspects um, the position custody uh, control uh, relevant uh, cloud application and and uh, environment searchability and uh, supporting the e-discovery tools uh, need to understand that uh, preservation uh, how to store the uh, e-discovery e uh, documents um, need to maintain the chain of custody there um, data retention law and record keeping obligations this is um, a different region different laws uh, for how long they need the data for how long you need to retain the data depending on because it will impact the cost if you uh, keep your data stored for the longer term then uh, it will impact uh, uh, your cost overall cost collection um, how you collect it is it is very important uh, for the forensic collection so bit by bit it is not um, possible or it is very difficult um, in cloud because you don't have uh, the physical access to the hard drive or any any hardware and also the the same hardware is shared with uh, the other customer as well in uh, in in order to support the multi tenancy uh, another aspect is the authentication so any evidence that you provide in the court uh, that should support the authentication uh, because any evidence uh, which is not supposed to be uh, authenticated or doesn't support uh, the uh, authentication mechanism uh, it will be difficult um, to present in the court uh, and it cannot be considered uh, admissible evidence in the court of law thanks for watching um, if you like the video please subscribe for more thank you